Welcome to Untold Physio Stories, a podcast that informs and educates by connecting you to rehab industry leaders who share their candid successes and failures in business and practice. Welcome back to Untold Physio Stories. I'm one of your hosts, Dr. E, with the eclectic approach to modern manual therapy, edge mobility system, modern rehab mastery, and speaking of which, one of my eclectic approach instructors is my co-host for this podcast, mainly because Andrew and I can't seem to get a hold of each other. So welcome to Untold Physio Stories, Dr. Kyle Coffey. You want to do a quick intro, Kyle? Yeah, certainly. So uh, I'm Kyle Coffey. I am the lead instructor for the eclectic approach for uh, blood flow restriction, modern strength training. Um, and I'm based out of uh, New Hampshire. I have my own cash-based clinic. And uh, I'm here this weekend helping uh, Urson as a, a lab assistant for one of his courses. An assistant, but an equal. He's not just uh, <laughs> he's not just getting me coffee and kombucha, although he has, and it's it's been really nice. So anyway... One of my failures, I find, is that I tend to want to cut people off when they ramble. So I, I've been working a lot on my active listening, and I realize when, when you see a certain patients that have had many, many different clinicians seeing them, that you might be the first person to really listen. And I used to tell people a long time ago, before pain science and everything, that I have a black belt in the art of cutting people off because sometimes people just ramble on or you ask them how their day was and they're just talking. They're giving you basically too much information, right? So I'm I'm usually pretty good about getting people back on track. And just maybe about a month ago, uh, a woman was referred to me for TMJ issues and she said that um, one of her close friends who she's seeing PT for went to PT school somewhere else, and this PT also follows me online, and she knows that I have um, a TMJ specialist. So she's been trying to get into semen. We finally uh, made an appointment. And uh, she's also seeing like a current local PT who just says they're not a specialist in TMJ, and they're doing all kinds of basically pathoanatomical care, a lot of like, uh, you know, your atlas is rotated or C4-5 is rotated, things like that. so I tried to, you know, do a, a bit of pain science education for that and telling her that those things aren't true. And that always takes a while, too. Um, we may have started the evaluation maybe five minutes late. She had to go to the restroom. It wasn't a big deal. And I don't, I don't really stress over being even running over kind of, you know, five minutes or so because I don't see a high volume of patients. And my next patient knows that if I'm late, then I still give them the full time and I might be late for another patient, another patient, but it's not like I'm seeing 20 patients. So she's just going on and on about her condition. And, you know, one of the things that really struck out, struck me is that not only did she have like a typical facial pain, but she said that her neck hurts and not only the back of her neck, it's the front of her neck too. And it also feels like she's being choked, like literally a, a a compressive feeling that gets worse, worse with stress and in social situations. I said, do you normally enjoy social situations? Like, yeah, you know, before all this, and it's been going on maybe six to eight months, before all this, I I really enjoyed throwing parties and um, going to parties, and now I just I just no longer enjoy them. I said, does anything seem to make it better? And she's like, not a whole lot. I mean, I get some relief from my neck, but not from my, not from my face or not, not for that choking feeling. I don't get any relief for the manual therapy for that. And... Um, she did say that when, you know, the, the biggest point to me was that she said on a flight to France where I was going to visit my kids, what do you think happened? What would you think? What's the first thing you think when someone has like a 13 hour flight? And with no kids. No, right? I mean like she was going to visit her oh, kids. Oh, she was so going I mean, to. What happens typically to any musculoskeletal complaint on a flight? Goes away. No, it doesn't go away. It gets worse. It like gets a spinal worse. complaint. Oh, spinal complaint. Yeah. Right, okay. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right, Because right. of the lack of movement. And lack of movement. Okay. Right. Yeah, 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 you're just sitting. You yeah. have nothing else to do. Right. Most necks and backs, it gets worse. Not like a shoulder that you're not reaching and mm-hmm. stuff. So, yeah, she said she was 100% pain-free on the flight. And also, they were there for a week, walking all around. Of course, she's kind of with her kids, visiting her kids in Europe. 
um, away from her entire life in America, 100% symptom free in her all of her complaints from the from the choking feeling to the TMJ, the neck and everything, 100% symptom free the entire time they're there. Then it comes back when she comes back here. I don't know exactly how long. It's taken her forever to relay the story, right? And every once in a while, I just kind of like she gets off track, and I'm like, okay, well, well, let me um, let me interrupt you and let me talk about why I think that it's important that your symptoms went away in a flight. She let me interrupt her for maybe about two minutes because my whole point was I think that if if this is really stress related, if you can be symptom free for hours, I think you're a rapid responder, right? If you can be symptom free for an entire week, we know we can get this to go away. Just that there's something about your life here, stress, the associations of whatever's going on. I'm not saying you have a bad life. I'm just saying that if you can get away from it, literally, unless you're somehow allergic to the American air or Western New York or whatever, if you can get it to go away for a week, I think we should try mindfulness. And I don't really think she bought that at all. And I think that that was the most significant thing she told me. So she just keeps on talking and talking and talking. And I just, I'm trying to be as good of an active listener as possible. I'm starting to stress out a little bit because at this point, it's 10 minutes before the next patient comes in and the next patient's already waiting. So I'm like, okay, let me interrupt you and let me do, she's like, no. So she just, she, she cut just it off. Roll, she just steamrolled over, let, please let me interrupt you uh, or, or, or I need to move on. And she just kept on talking. And the next time I tried saying something similar, she just said no and she kept on talking. And about 20 after, which is 20 minutes into the next patient's appointment, who's already been waiting half an hour because they were 10 minutes early, you know, we don't really count that 10 minutes. I'm like, okay, let's just try this. So I just kind of stopped her or maybe even once she was talking, I just started doing retractions on her <laughs> in overpressure. Was she still trying Was she still trying to talk? No, no, at that point she was stop. <laughs> most people stop talking when you put your hand over their maxilla. <laughs> And I had her try, like, hey, let's try some jaw retraction, some new overpressures. And it's just like, there's no build up to this. I'm, try I'm like, this is normally a position that alleviates TMJ pain. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to give her something, you know? And she said, no, there's not really a lot of change. I'm like, well, sometimes it needs to be a high dosage. So why don't we try this 10 times an hour? And, and I'm, I'm like, I'm really sorry, but I have to see my next patient. We ran out of time. I will email you the entire recovery plan. And honestly, I think mindfulness. And a little bit better sleep is the way to go because I'm really hopeful. If you can get it to go away for a week, I think if, if you start concentrating on things that reduce your stress, that this will go away. Mm -hmm. She's like, okay, I didn't even have time to bill her to take a credit card information, you know? So I never hear from her again. Probably not surprisingly because one of the last things she asked me is, aren't you going to do something to me? Like she, she actually also just expected me to do some kind of – additional passive care even though she's been going to a Cairo I think and a PT for at least six months with no real relief and I, you know I tried to inter I was able to interject every once in a while and said like if these things aren't working they're not going to work like there's nothing magical about my manual therapy and I think this is really the most important thing you told me but she did not have that expectation for me at all and here I am That's trying to be yeah. I'm trying to be an active listener and I I, I let it go too far so the next two evaluations, I was like done with my history in like 20 minutes. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting because <laughs> it's like when you go to a continuing ed course and you get you learn something and then like every patient you want to use that on. You're trying to learn active listening and be better at it. And so you're really trying to give her the benefit of the doubt. But in that instance, it's all, it's almost like, you know, trying to figure out a way. It seems like she was pretty adverse to that. She was going to stop you regardless, but... Um, trying to interject and actually breaking that active listening might have helped a little. I mean, I don't know if there was a way I to tried. do it with her. I mean, yeah. I tried, but the funny, I think the funniest feels like I literally just put my hand in her face and started retract. I just, I was hoping, I was like, please let this alleviate her complaints. Well, you chose the right but, technique, but without, but without because the, without she the, can't the, speak with it. Without the, right, I should have just done that. <laughs> without the placebo of me even setting up that, that I think that's, this is uh, gonna make you better. Oh gosh, I Did, still, I still like. I'm like, I'm gonna remember this case forever because, like, I'm really, I'm like, I'm, I'm being an awesome active listener. And this, just time flew. Let me tell you, time flew. You know what? When you when you started off the the story and we're talking about active listening, I was thinking to myself that I tend to not be a good active listener. Um, 
in some instances and when I when I'm not a good active listener I tend to interrupt like physically I start speaking yeah but I was thinking as you were saying that like especially as that goes on for so long do we start in that instance where you couldn't say something because she was stopping you were you then still not being a good active listener because mentally you were like not there you get you get what I'm saying like your your train yeah, of thought I mean, inside I, is like I I feel as if I was really starting to stress out that I'm not going to get a chance to do anything, and a small part of me was really hoping that she really saw how significant being a week of sim- completely symptom free not just feeling better but completely symptom free and she even said yeah my husband said but you were so good when we were in France. And she just kind of dismisses it as if like, oh, what do you know? You know, you don't right, know how I feel right. kind of like she probably got upset at him at that point. But I mean, it is a really good point. That's the part of the lot. The, the thing that I'm focusing on is the thing that she didn't want to hear from right. her husband, right. you know. Um, and now a friend who follows me probably doesn't follow me anymore. Like, hey, you referred me to this guy. He didn't do anything. Yeah. And, and unfortunately, I might be the only one who ever really listened to her story. Um, but yeah, I mean, I hope out there if she or your or her friend is listening that um, – Maybe you can even influence her to try mindfulness or or just give her some hope that the, the passive care is not really what's right for her. Yeah. You know? No, that's a huge component that's missed. And like you're alluding to, it's also the component that most patients don't want to hear. Right. Right? They're the, they're, it's the first thing they're going to dismiss. Yeah. So you can find Kyle and I, along with Andrew, my uh, normal co-host, on Modern Rehab Mastery. That's an online three-month mentoring program, one month with every mentor. It's a combination of modern manual therapy, modern patient education, and, and modern strength training. I'm Dr. E with all of those things, and please give us a five-star rating on uh, Apple Podcasts, subscribe on Google Podcasts, Stitcher, and um, Spotify, and I will see you later. Oh, and also, how can people find you, Kyle? Oh, you can find me at uh, modernstrengthtraining.com. Um, you can also find me at my uh, personal clinic website, moduspttperformance.com. Um, reach out on Instagram, moduspt, uh, or on Facebook, moduspt and performance. And take Kyle's online certificate course if you want to be one of the first clinicians or strength coaches in your area to get certified in BFR. Have an awesome day.